Hey everyone, I'm OLED, and I know I've been gone a long time, and I'm sorry. Uh, for that, I'm going to be uh, doing something special, and I'm going to be making a Forge video um, to show you all of my processes and how I make blades. Uh, and I'm also going to be giving one of my blades away to a subscriber. I'm trying to get to a thousand, so let's, if we can try to get to a thousand, that would be cool. And one of you people are going to be getting one, because I clearly have too many. Oh, what is for breakfast? Oh god, it's just swords! Oh, also, I will be giving away either this blade, or I will be willing to sell this blade. Just message me on YouTube. Okay, selecting your metal is possibly the most important thing. Uh, rebar is not good, but it is good for practicing forging, which is always a good thing. Uh, angle iron uh, or bed frame. This is a piece of bed frame. Same deal. You can put it as a backing for a mild steel on a knife or practice. We are going to go with a large piece of spring steel. Uh, this is from a truck. A truck. You're also going to need um, a hammer. This is a two and a half pounder. You're going to need eye protection. Always have your metal ready. This is a belt grinder. We're starting with a 40 grit belt. As you can see, I've welded my spring steel after chopping off a piece and heating it to straighten it out. Um, you can also use blacksmithing tongs as well. This is me turning my forge on. I don't like to go over 0.5 on the pressure scale. Letting it warm up a little bit. Um, repeat this process until you get a flat edge. Remember it is important to do a little dance as you're forging uh, to keep the demons away. So go ahead and get that done. Good job. You'll notice the steel acts almost like play-doh. It'll, it'll rise up where you're hitting it in the other direction. So just keep it straight. Um, I'm shimming in my anvil back in. Make sure you keep your anvil solid. You'll already start to see some uh, defamation and, and uh, hammer strikes on the steel. So just keep repeating that process until you'll draw, you draw it out. And you'll also notice the steel will start getting longer uh, as you strike it. Just again, imagine Play-Doh as if you would strike you know, uh, a tube of Play-Doh, it would get longer. Make sure you keep an eye on keeping it straight. You don't have to really do too much work on that right now because that's uh, all finished work that you can do later, but make sure that you do your best to keep it straight. You can see that after a while um, we're starting to get a nice uh, collapse of the steel. You can see parts that I've struck and parts that I haven't struck. One important thing when you're forging that I, I learned a while ago is if you have a steel uh, to an anvil, just make sure that you strike accurately. Choose accuracy over strength. And you'll see in a minute why you don't want to go ham crazy on the steel here, because you might end up sending dents into it that are really hard to get out. Making sure I keep it straight, making sure I keep it aligned. Keep an eye on your steel always. Don't ever leave your forge unattended. You got good, good color on this one. Eventually you can get good at eyeballing the color of the steel uh, so it'll be good enough to heat and move. Remember also that the anvil will act uh, in a, a way of convection and it will pull heat out of the steel that you're working really really quickly. Now after a while of forging you'll see that I've got a decent shape and I'm starting to shape in the tip of the blade. You do that by just rising the hand that you're holding the steel with and hammering at the angle that you would like your tip to uh, start coming in. Just make sure that you account for the other angle that is coming up when you're forging. This is another thing we'll have taken care of with the straightening jig. 
All right, here you can see what it looks like after trying to forge the tip in. We're doing pretty good. You can see all those hammer strikes in the steel. This right here is a riser. We're going to have to fix that with the grind or with the forge. Now you can see I'm taking it to the grinder and I'm grinding and cleaning off some of this forge scale. I'm also beginning to do a little bit of profiling, which is just taking the side of your blade and shaping it with the grinder because we don't have any edges on it yet for that reason. You can see she's starting to clean up a little bit. Now here's where I'm going to show you, you can see the hammer strikes that have gone deep to need grinding. If you strike too hard, those hammer strikes will go very, very deep and it'll be super hard to get out. And we're going to go back to the grinder. And now you can see, even after that angle grinding with an aggressive angle, there still is deep dents in it. Now this is my angle grinder, and you can see this is the flap disc that I use right here. You can go, you should go with lower grits if you're trying to remove steel, but it's really good for cleaning up. All right, what we're doing here is normalizing. Um, this is going to fix the blade molecularly after the damage that you cause well, with forging. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to bring the blade to quenching temperature three times and let it cool in a straightening jig. Air cool, and I just use a straightening jig to keep it straight while it cools. Let's take a moment to remember that this all came from a spring. That's totally sweet. Alright, now after normalizing, we are going to start drilling the holes for the handle. Um, make sure that you mark where you want your holes to be, and you're going to want to have at least two of them that are the same size as your pin stock. And the pin stock I'm going to use is pins from a shopping cart. So you're also going to want to have a low gear in your drill press or drill to make it uh, spin slowly. Once you have your holes drilled, go ahead and mark the wood handle slats or whatever handle slats uh, material that you're using. Uh, if that makes it identical to the holes, you'll see that I have two to four arrows that uh, show the top and sides of where I intend the holes and the pins to line up. It takes a second to get used to, but once you've done it a couple times, it's not so hard. Once you get your holes drilled and they're all lined up, make sure that you come out and remove your pin stock from your local shopping cart. Don't steal anything, please. Um, then you're going to set your blade on your blocks and just make sure that everything is lined up. Remember this process because this is what we will be doing later just with epoxy to make sure everything is sealed and it will also have your cap, or excuse me, your guard on as well. Now we're going to start getting our guard ready. So you can see I'm using a Dremel tool to uh, get the same size hole as the shoulders that you're going to grind out on your tang. You can see here the hole is the correct size for my blade, so I'm going to go ahead and get ready to uh, check that out, make sure that all is sized up correctly. Okay, here we go. At this point, I'm just starting to barely put uh, bevels on it, and you can see uh, it's nice and shiny right now, and the bevels are just starting to begin. Again, all came from a spring. We're going to start the quench now, and what we have is a super uh, powerful magnet fishing magnet. Uh, the reason is, is your blade will become non-magnetic when it is uh, to the temperature of quenching. Maybe a little bit after, so when it's non-magnetic, give it another time or two. Right here we're warming our blade for quench, and this is a really, really, really important part not to mess up. Also be extremely careful. You can see I'm putting my blade to the magnet, and it's still magnetic. Alright, we're going in for the quench. This is possibly the most important part. At this part, you're going to want to look for any warps or any cracks. And uh, there you have a little bit of a uh, window when it comes out, about 15 seconds. Alright, the blade's looking good. It's coming out of the quench now. Looks like it was nice temperature. And after it cooled down in the straightening jig, just to make sure it's straight, we're going to go ahead and file test it, and the file should feel like it's skating across ice if your blade was quenched correctly. That's a nice look at the blade after it has been quenched. 
Now we're going to want to temper. Um, your tempering cycle can be in the oven, depending on the steel, but this is spring steel, so we're going to do two cycles of one hour at 400 degrees. That should make the metal uh, not brittle enough and a little bit more malleable to not break. All right, after your blade has been tempered, we're gonna go ahead and set our handle just like we did before, same process. Only this time we're gonna make sure that we add epoxy to the insides of the slats and the pins themselves. Make sure everything fits up tightly and clamp it and let it dry. After everything's dried, you're gonna go ahead and take everything to the uh, grinder again um, make sure that once you're on the grinder at this point that you keep a bucket of water handy Not n super necessary for the handle, uh, but the blade can get hot if you have exposed the tang Which is something that you are going to want to do for a full tang blade All right, this is a grinding jig. This is going to show you what degree you're grinding your bevels at uh, I have mine set to 15 degree. I repeat it does not matter how much you sharpen your blade if you are not experienced. It can feel sharp, but if your edge geometry is incorrect, it will not cut. It's important when you start grinding your bevels to remember to keep the blade cool or you will ruin your quench. Keep a bucket of water and every two or three passes, just make sure that you dip. Holy cow, look at this spider. He's scary. Alright, there's a bucket of water. Good to have. And it takes a little bit of time, um, but make sure that you always check your jig or you check your bevels to get your edge geometry correct. This is one of the most important parts. Your blade will not cut without it. It takes a little bit of time, but make sure that you keep dipping that blade to keep it cool. Alright, we have our blade in the vise now, and all we're doing is we're using our angle grinder again to clean up some of that forge scale to make the blade pop. Remember also to keep your blade cool at this point. Make sure that before you add anything to the handle that you take a little bit of time to give it some love and hand sand that handle. But for God's sakes, also this is the time that I gotta say this is a weapon at this time, so please be careful. You can hurt yourself and you can cut yourself really bad with this right now. Do not drop it on your foot and do not slip on the blade because you will cause serious injury. Well, we're gonna go ahead and do a bottle test on this handle. Alright, that popped that first bottle in half nicely. That looked nice too. And we'll see what she does to this milk gallon. Alright, once you have a blade that will pass through solid matter easily, you can move on to finishing your handle. That's beautiful. And remember, I will be selling or giving away this blade. Just instant message me on YouTube. When Truffle approves of your blade, you are ready to move on. And it feels comfortable. Truffle is too much interested in your hydro dip, so you're going to have to get the cat away. Um, hydro dipping just involves taking some high gloss spray paint, normally the uh, good stuff, and spray painting the top of um, a reservoir of water and you dip your handle right in and generally it comes out with really cool designs this one left a pretty sweet design and an awesome uh, grip on the handle of the knife we're gonna go ahead and grind down our butt cap i did this by tracing the bottom of the blade or excuse me the bottom of the handle i did this by tracing the bottom of the handle on a piece of brass and we're just going to go ahead and grind until we meet the lines on the butt cap now this isn't forged in fire, so traditionally you peen your butt cap on, but I'm just going to be epoxying this one on. After that, you can go ahead and bottle test. Once again, she passes through just nicely. Clean cut. We'll go ahead and do one more bottle test. Honestly, at this point, this blade is starting to scare me. I do not want to keep it around because it is frightening. At this point too, you're going to want to finalize the entire thing by giving it a nice clear coat. This will give the handle a really, really killer uh, gloss, and it will also make it a lot more durable. Once you can see that no light comes through the tang, that means that your handle is straight and you have made a good blade. Thanks for joining me. Alright you all, that's it. I had fun making it, and, and I had fun waving it around, but it's scary. 
Um, remember, subscribe, please. And I will be giving this or another away to a subscriber. If you would like to purchase this one, please let me know. And uh, I'll get back to you. Thank you guys so much. I'll have another video up soon. Have a good one. Bang, bang, super bang, luck, rap, and roll. We're getting serious now.